This is Tom Carter with the Tulsa World, visiting with Mel Tillis for Close Up Country, our nationally syndicated radio series. Melbourne, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tom. It's awful nice to be here in Tulsa, and uh, thanks for, uh, for asking us to come up to your microphone. We just uh, finished watching Mel at Zigfields, where he opened his performance with a Bob Will song. And Mel Tillis is such a contemporary artist, his music um, so readily appeals to today's generation that many people might find it difficult to believe that Mel Tillis is familiar with the old Bob Wills repertoire and he's not only familiar but actually recorded with the legendary Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys. I sure did and that was an experience that I will never forget and, the, and it, uh, it was such a boost to my career to uh, having uh, work with this man because he uh, taught me a lot in the studio. I didn't have a chance to uh, uh, work with him out uh, in concerts, but only uh, one time I worked with him. And uh, I wish that I, 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 I had had an opportunity, an opportunity to have worked more in concert you know, with him, but uh, it was still a, a pleasure to record with that man. Are we, um, we're, we're doing this interview on Mel's bus. Is, is the noise, the motor from the bus picking up at all? We can't turn that down at all, can we? Uh, turn it off and freeze, but I don't... Well, we don't want to freeze. I can EQ it out. All right. This is a hot interview, but we don't want to freeze. <laughs> Mel Tillis didn't begin as a singer. He, um, he went to Nashville, and he told me the other day um, what kind of vehicle he was driving when he arrived. <laughs> and... Um, you, you, you came to Nashville under slightly less than ideal circumstances, am I right? I sure did. I, I came to Nashville in uh, 56. I had a uh, 49 Mercury. Uh, the windshield, I had a hole in the uh, windshield on the right side, and I uh, stuffed my old uh, football jersey in it to keep the snow from, from uh, uh, coming in on my pregnant wife. <laughs> I had uh, a twenty-four, uh, twenty-six dollar Air Force unemployment check, and I went to Nashville. And then Mel Tillis began writing songs that subsequently were recorded by the Cherokee cowboy Ray Price, "The Same Old Me" and "Heart Over Mine," and some of the classics that Price had uh, before he began recording with the symphony orchestra. And uh, Mel Tillis went on to write some other songs that actually became American Standards, and I think he knows what songs I'm talking about. Yeah, there was uh, two of them that, that I think have become standards. Uh, Ruby Don't Take Your Love to, uh, uh, to Town was one of them. <laughs> it, 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 it was just a tremendous hit, and then I suppose the biggest hit that I've ever written is a song called uh, Detroit City. And you recorded each of those songs and um, they were recorded by some other people as well. Right. I think when I recorded them that uh, I, uh, people knew me more as a writer than the, uh, uh, a singer. And I'll admit that I didn't have as much experience or uh, as much uh, going uh, for me as a singer in those days. So I just recorded the songs and, and uh, put them in albums and, and uh, let... Uh, uh, the other people record the songs and uh, you know everything seems to work out and it did work out. Was your uh, singing style at all influenced by the old Ray Price sound? You wrote the hits for Price. Uh, your band today has the high harmony that Price used to use with the Cherokee Cowboy sound. It has a heavy reliance on rhythm. Did you like um, that western swing sound which I guess actually originated with Wills? It did. It all, all uh, started with uh, Bob Wills. I remember Back in the uh, 40s, when uh, 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 we used to work, uh, my mother and all the kids, uh, my brothers and my sisters, we used to work at a at a uh, canning plant. Uh, we were all small, and we got paid by how many hampers of uh, uh, peas we could shell a day. Uh, so mother, she took us all over to the old uh, uh, canning plant, and we would all sit around and shell 
peas and they had a loud speaker in uh, uh, in the uh, canning plant there and they always played Bob Wills music and I think that uh, uh, Bob Wills uh, was the one that actually uh, 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 got me interested in country music in the beginning. Uh, later on, uh, 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 I liked uh, Red Foley. And then uh, when I moved to Nashville, I began uh, to listen to Ray Price to his music. And uh, I think be uh, between all three of them, that's where my style originated, I guess. Mel, it's no secret you don't write songs anymore. And yet, your songwriting was so significant, your income still remains substantial from the songwriting. Um, you told me the other day just exactly how many figures it represents. I'd like you to tell our listeners and then tell them why perhaps you don't write anymore. Well, uh, first of all, I think the good Lord only gives you a certain amount of songs. And I think that uh, I've had about 600 songs recorded uh, and they they are still uh, being recorded uh, around the world uh, and now I'm too busy being an entertainer and an artist uh, that I don't have enough uh, time to sit down and, and uh, write a song the same thing with uh, Chris Christopherson or Willie Nelson uh, uh, Roger Miller you know, all these guys are great uh, writers, but you don't uh, hear of many, many uh, songs of any more of these guys writing. Uh, Willie Nelson, he's going back and doing the old standards, you know. And I think in order to be a writer, I still uh, believe that I've got uh, a few more songs left, but I've got to get time off, you know, uh, to do this. I, uh, I'm so busy now that I just don't have to, uh, enough uh, time, and I'm not as hungry as I was in those days. <laughs> Talking about time, there are, um, according to the Musicians Union, approximately three quarters of a million musicians in this country, and of that figure, only 13 ever have been named Entertainer of the Year. And with people like Dolly Parton and Glenn Campbell and Merle Haggard and Johnny Cash and others, Mel Tillis was pronounced Entertainer of the Year. That was in 1976 when the awards fell into controversy. And yet you went ahead to accept the highest award given in this industry. Did you appreciate the award, and would you do it again? Tom, I appreciated it. It was, uh, it was uh, something that uh, I had had a lot of exposure that year. I had had a, a, a tremendous amount of uh, television. Uh, before it seemed like that that the the uh, 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 the singer that had the biggest records out uh, uh, usually got the entertainment end of it. My entertainment is, is I do a little bit of all of it. I I try to do uh, comedy, and we do our singing, and and uh, try to do it all, you know, uh, if we can on stage. I carry a great band, and I think th uh, uh, that was my uh, year to win. I wouldn't want to go through it again. No, I would not want to go through it again because uh, 76 and 77 uh, were years that, that uh, and 78, and it's still continuing. I'm just uh, worked to death. I hate to turn down a date, you know. Uh, uh, it's just, uh, uh, I love to entertain, but I don't believe I could live it again, uh, uh, through it all. But I do appreciate my peers, uh, voting, uh, for me. I know there was some, uh, controversy ab about it, but, uh, uh, a lot of, of acts, uh, got, s uh, some bad publicity. I think that hurt them. Uh, but I don't think that I have to, to uh, apologize for winning it. The, um, the other day we were talking, Mel Tillis has had, um, oh, for probably a, at least for a full decade, has consistently recorded top ten country songs. Yet, there has not been the major crossover record. 
Nonetheless, you, com you command a respectable performance price, particularly for country music artists. Why do you think your popularity remains as intense as it does, even without the monster crossover records? Television. Television has uh, 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 made me a household word in any uh, place you go. And I do carry a good band all the time. That was one thing that I learned from Bob. Uh, he says, uh, carry a good band with you. And he said, you can just uh, work forever. But but television, like I leave here uh, 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 tomorrow, I go to, uh, uh, to Oklahoma City, and I'm going to do a, a private party for Dale Robinson. And then I go to, uh, to L.A., the band and I, and we do the uh, Glen Campbell PGA Golf Tournament Banquet. And, and then I do uh, five Hollywood Squares. Uh, Wednesday we do the uh, uh, Tonight Show. Thursday we, uh, we're going to work the Palomino, and then Friday we're going to do uh, an NBC special uh, with the band. So television has been uh, uh, the biggest thing uh, I think that has happened to me. And Mel Tillis didn't, um, the television exposure isn't entirely new to Mel Tillis. He was one of the first people, one of the first contemporary country artists to regularly appear on a syndicated television show. And I'm talking about the Glenn Campbell show and even before that the old Porter Wagner show, am I right? Well, uh, Glenn Campbell was not syndicated, that was a uh, network. Uh, Porter, Porter uh, Wagner was syndicated. And uh, Porter fired me. <laughs> I was getting an awful, an awful lot of mail, so uh, it didn't, it, it wasn't too uh, uh, well accepted. So uh, uh, I got, uh, I got fired. And right after I got fired, Glenn Campbell called me and asked the next, uh, uh, to be exact, the next day, I got a call from L.A. from Glenn Campbell. He said, Melvin. I said, Who is this? He said, He said, This is Glenn Campbell. He said, I want you to come out and be a uh, semi-regular uh, on my show. So, I, you know, I couldn't believe that happened. So I went out, and, I, and, and uh, Glenn gave him uh, me my first national exposure. And then from there I went to all the guest shows, the talk uh, shows, and then to other, other shows, and uh, it, was just, uh, it was just something. You know, it seemed to me like, like all this had... Uh, has been a plan for me. Uh, it it seems like that it was meant to happen for me. I remember watching you on one of the Glenn Campbell shows years ago, and Glenn had a part in the show where he read letters <laughs> from the readers, and one reader wrote and wanted to know, the reader inquired about your stuttering. I don't recall the exact text, but he inquired about your stuttering. I remember that. And Campbell replied, well, Mel stutters, but I don't think that's any reason he shouldn't be on the show. Through the years, you stuttering has become as associated with you as black is with Johnny Cash. Have you ever resented or felt exploited because of your speech impediment? Uh, exploited? I think... Uh Uh, 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 going back to Glenn's letter, uh, the letter said, why do you let uh, Mel Tillis uh, get on, on television and, and talk and make fun of people who stutter? And Glenn said, he said, Mel really stutters. He said, and I don't think that we should uh, keep him off television. He said, we let uh, uh, Ray Charles come on. That's what he said. I think uh, uh, there has been times that uh, people try to exploit it, like when I go out to L.A. or to Hollywood or, or a movie, someone would write a, a script with a stutter in there, and I would say, uh, uh, take this out of there. I said, I'll do it the way I talk, and you don't have to write the stutter in, because if, uh, if I stuttered on your words, uh, uh, it would be phony, and I'd make them rewrite the script. But I think that was a, a, a more or less a, a, the writers didn't know me, 
you know, and they, they, uh, uh, I'm not going to stutter on their punch lines. <laughs> if, I, if I could do that, I could stop stuttering, you know. <laughs> have you, um, I guess, I guess you have stuttered since childhood. Since I was about three years old, I had malaria. And, uh, right after that, my mother, she said that I, that I could, uh, uh talk pretty good up until then. And then after I, well, I had malaria, I started uh, stuttering. Mount Tillis plays... It's one of the handful of country entertainers who plays the world's finest dinner showrooms in Las Vegas. And he doesn't play the lounges. He's a headline act there. We were talking a while ago about your early arrival in Nashville. Country music has become so popular then. It's gone to Las Vegas, and it's gotten expensive. And a lot of our country fans perhaps can't afford to come to the shows like they once could. Do you think that the selling and the marketing of country music has been improved or, or disproved by, by its popularity, the kind we see in Las Vegas and on network television. You think it, uh, you ask me if I approve of it? All right. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I miss, I miss, uh, 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 work in the clubs, the honky tonks that I used to work. But anymore, I can't uh, uh, work the majority of these places because I have a budget, and and in order for me to keep a good uh, 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 band, I pay my band what I used to get uh, uh, in the clubs, you know, uh, uh, around Oklahoma and Texas. And I have an airplane. I have a, a King Air a turbo jet. I've got a big bus. I've got a lot of expenses. Uh, and the only time that, that uh, these people can see us is when we do a fair or a rodeo, places that, the, uh, uh, that can have a lot of people in, or a dinner theater that, that uh, charges, but well, I don't know uh, what they charge here tonight. Uh, they charged uh, 1750 a person, uh, <clears throat> or maybe it was 15. Anyhow, it was around 30 to $40 a couple uh, just to sit down. Right. And then uh, you know, the average tab in there would be around $100. And then, too, uh, 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 my uh, feeling on this is that uh, uh, your career has to go up or else you die. And if... if, if uh, if uh, myself or Roy Clark or Johnny Cash or Waylon Jennings or Willie Nelson, if we went went back to the clubs and and and, and worked them again, uh, they would book us, and there wouldn't be any room for new acts to come along. And you've got to have some place for these new acts to come along and get a a a, a start. And we're getting older, and we can't can't uh, uh, go in those clubs and work four and, and five hours a night on stage, you know. We can't do that anymore. And then, too, the, the, uh, the security of it. You know, they see me on, uh, on television so much, and there's always some nut out there that uh, wants to take a crack at you. And uh, that's the reason. Mel Tillis, um, as much as anyone in country music, and certainly more than most, has a film career, and only this week has been making the sequel to Smokey and the Bandit with Jackie Gleason and is one of our few country entertainers who performs with people like Burt Reynolds and Jackie Gleason and the original cast of Smokey and the Bandit. What's it like to uh, to make a movie, House? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I'm the uh, 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 cameo. Uh, I guess I, I am the number one cameo actor uh, of all the country music people. I've been in a jillion uh, movies, but I'm only in there for just a little bit, you know. But I enjoy it. I enjoy it uh, being uh, around those guys. Uh, I'm just uh, uh, getting experience at the moment. Uh, uh, working with uh, Jackie Gleason. Golly, I worked with him the other uh, day in Atlanta, and he helped me. He said he he said he said Mel deliver your lines like uh, uh, this, and and he told me. It, exactly how to deliver it. He even told Bert 
how to deliver uh, some of his lines. And and if the line wasn't good enough, he rewrote it on the spot, you know. And uh, I am getting some uh, tremendous experience from these guys. Uh, I was in a movie with uh, 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 Bert, uh, uh, with uh, Kirk Douglas, and that was an experience. Uh, I was in one with Clint Eastwood, and so uh, uh, for too long though, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, get a major role, and I'm looking forward to that. I'm not gonna uh, give up my music. My music is always gonna be number one, but I want to do something else, you know, uh, uh, for at least. Uh, uh, two or three weeks out of the year except uh, going on stage and, and singing. I think you should um, write a script and write yourself as a star and then give Gleason a cameo role. <laughs> He's a great man. You know, you know, he lives in Florida and uh, and I went up to him. I had never met uh, uh, Mr. Gleason. I had met him once before in, in L.A. He and I were presenters on a uh, 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 the Agva Awards, and uh, but I didn't get uh, to talk to him. I walked out and I did my lines and he did his lines and he left and I split and I didn't get to see him. But over there, I said, uh, Mr. Gleason, I said I'm from Florida and you live in in, in Miami. I said I'm from Pahokee, Florida. He said, You'll live it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, we've come a long way since. Uh, 1946 Mercury's with broken right windshields. <laughs> and I imagine there was a time when you could go into any recording session in Nashville and you probably knew every musician on the session. Do you miss the quaintness and the intimacy and the family-like atmosphere that must have prevailed during those days? Uh, I miss that. You know, that the, uh, those are days when... Uh, uh, there was only just a few uh, uh, writers in Nashville, Roger Miller, Hank Carquin, Harlan Howard. Uh, there was only just a few of us, you know, running around there. We knew each other, and we'd make deals with each other, you know, and, and, w and we knew all the artists because there wasn't all that many artists back then, you know. I miss that. Uh, uh, sometime an artist would come in like uh, Burl Ives, and he'd, uh, uh, we'd uh, uh, party with him for, for a week. And then sometime some of us would leave with him and go down to the Bahamas for uh, six weeks. I went with him one time for six uh, weeks to the Bahama Islands out on his uh, boat, sailboat. I think I wrote 18 songs uh, out on his uh, boat, and he did 15 of them in albums, Calypso songs, you know. Uh, uh, I miss that. But those uh, uh, days are gone. It's changed. Nashville is, is full of musicians and singers and writers, and... And now it seems like all the artists are, are using their own bands now. Uh, my new album that, that I just finished, I went in and I convinced the producers and, and all that. I said, everybody is using their bands. Can I use my band? I said, I've got a good band. And they said, okay, Mel. So I did. wonder if, they'll, if, they'll, um, if, there will, if there will come a day when the old studio musicians will, will be out of work. I don't think... The, the, uh, 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 most of the old musicians that I know are now are, are working out on the road. Uh, 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 Grady Martin, I think, is out, out now with Jerry Reed when he goes out. Uh, Buddy Emmons, I understand, is going to uh, work for Ray Price. Ray Price, it, I heard, was going back and, and was going to regroup and uh, get uh, most of his old uh, pickers back. Uh, uh, work is getting is getting scarce for him. This has been Tom Carter with the Tulsa World chatting with Mel Tillis on Close Up Country. Thank you very much, Melvin. Thank you, Tom. It's been a pleasure. Right. That's a good one. You did all right.